as you know, it's the new me. You noticed. Um, I'm going to start wearing these. I think I'm okay. Um, I know I can see better. I try to wear these most of the time. My eye is uh, still can't see, but it's uh, it's not involuntarily closing like it did. So I'm getting better with that, and so we may have a little more surgery to have. So it opens a little more. But anyway, enough of me. Uh, I'm gonna, my new glasses. Um, the Senate is set for a busy September. We know that. We're in the middle of a robust debate on the nuclear agreement with Iran. Pope Francis is due here next week. Uh, we expect uh, as many as a half a million people here on Capitol Hill that during the time he's here uh, on both sides of the Capitol. And uh, then we have the Chinese president coming the next day. There are just 10 days of scheduled time left before the government basically shuts down for lack of funding. Democrats have been calling for a bipartisan budget negotiation for months, and to this point, nothing but silence. Instead of working with us, Republicans on the presidential trail and here in Congress are calling for a government shutdown. Not all of them, but enough to cause a lot of problems. And they want to deny women the access to critical health care. That's their hue and cry, and it continues. Because of the reckless actions and rhetoric here from Republicans, one former Republican budget aide told the Washington Post that the chances for a Republican government shutdown at 60 percent. Others say it's even higher. That is something we should be concerned about. Americans don't need another Republican shutdown. We've had those before, and uh, they've actually shut the government down. Even the conservative editors of the Wall Street Journal know this is a strategy that is doomed to fail. Here's what they said today, quote, conservatives are trying to force a shutdown over Planned Parenthood. The problem is that this plan lacks even a small chance of success. We all know how this story ends. Let's get past Republican infighting and get to work the American people sent us here to do. A brief word on Iran. The author of the bill, Senator Corker, I should say one of the authors, said the re resolution before us will take 60 votes to pass. He said that. Senator Cardin has said that. Lots have said the same thing because that's the way it is. That was the agreement that was made. Senator McConnell has a choice to make. Democrats already proposed that after an appropriate debate, we move to final passage on the Iran resolution. Senator McConnell can either continue to put procedure hurdles in front of the Iran vote, or he can accept the reality so we can move into another important business like funding the government. Forty-two Democrats support the Iran agreement, and their votes will reflect that. Now, here's what's going on in the House. Uh, they're having a caucus at 4 o'clock this afternoon. They're going to decide what they're going to do. Here are some of the proposals floating around. Um, number one, they're talking about moving toward voting on a measure asserting Obama didn't have the right to do what he did. And so there was be, they are not going to take a vote. Um, second, Republicans are working on a bill to try to prevent Obama from lifting sanctions against Iran. Third, the House would vote on a resolution to approve the Iran pact. Of course, the original plan that we've been talking about for months has been a resolution of disapproval. So uh, the Republicans in the House who are going to schedule a vote on Friday now don't know when to schedule a vote or on what. Senator Durbin. Thanks very much, uh, Leader Reid. It's pretty clear what happened with the Senate Republicans. 60 votes was a standard on the Iran nuclear agreement until they didn't have 60 votes and then they changed the standard. And I think the announcement this week of four more senators supporting uh, the Iran agreement was really the breaking point for them. Now they are in disarray, both in the Senate and in the House, as to what to do next. Uh, I, th I know what I think should be done, and I hope you agree. Let's get this to a vote. We want a fulsome debate on the floor of the United States Senate, and we want to vote on final passage of this measure with a 60-vote margin, a clean vote. Let's do that in a respectful way. 
a way that honors the Senate and honors this awesome and historic vote that we are facing. That's what we should do. Now, you may remember back in June when we gathered here and said to uh, our leader, uh, Mitch McConnell, the leader in the Senate, start working now on this budget agreement. You're going to reach a point where you won't have any time to finish it. He ignored us. And where are we today? In September, two weeks and a half left, maybe three, in this whole session with a number of breaks for Jewish Holy Days and other, pers other purposes, and we still don't have a budget agreement. We are facing a government shutdown under the Republican leadership in Congress. They were warned in June not to let this happen. We stand here today facing not only this critical, historic vote on the Iran nuclear agreement, but also the question of funding our government, the transportation bill, and so many others uh, in terms of cybersecurity that should be a matter of debate immediately. It's up to us to move this forward. It's up to Senator McConnell to step up, call this for a vote after a, a good, honorable debate. Let's move this matter forward and then move to the important business that faces us by the end of this month. Thank you, Harry. Uh, look, everywhere Republican leaders look this fall, there's potential disaster lurking thanks to their hard right members determined to hold the government hostage unless they get everything they want. In just a few short months, we've come together to prevent a shutdown and fund the government. Oh, sorry. In a few short months, we have to come together to prevent a shutdown and fund the government to pass a long-term transportation bill that robustly funds our infrastructure, extend key tax breaks important to middle-class families and growing our economy, and preventing a default on our debt that would be a catastrophe. Already, the hard right is scheming and plotting to gum up the works and threaten shutdown unless they get their way on extraneous issues. Rather than trying to eyeball the hard right at the last minute and risk going over a cliff, Republican leaders should start working with Democrats right now, right now, on bipartisan solutions to prevent a shutdown, prevent a default, and prevent another self-inflicted economic wound. Republican leaders tried to stare down the right during the FISA debate, and their failure to plan ahead resulted in critical national security programs going dark. Unless Republicans get moving on these urgent deadlines, we're going to go through the same ugly song and dance once again. As the Iowa caucuses get closer and voices on the hard right demanding shutdowns and, sh and showdowns get louder, it's just going to be harder and harder for Republican leaders to do the right thing and to keep the country moving forward instead of getting jammed up in internecine party fights. We hope the GOP will tune out the hard right work with Democrats, relieve the harmful cuts that damage our national and economic security. Republican leaders have already said they're willing to have budget negotiations. We've been asking for these for several months right here. So why wait? Let's get together now, start down the road to providing our military and middle class with the security they both so much deserve. Senator Murray. <clears throat> Two years ago, Families across the country watched as Republican leaders promised they were not going to shut down the government. Republicans had spent months refusing to negotiate a budget deal, and they thought they were just going to wait until the last minute, kick the can down the road for another few months, and then do it all again. Well, we all remember what happened next. Republican leaders let the Tea Party take over, and they pushed us into a completely unnecessary shutdown in a bizarre and failed attempt to derail health care reform. And only after that crisis, Republicans were willing to come to the table, make compromises, and work with us to reach a bipartisan budget deal. Unfortunately, Republican leaders don't seem to have learned any lessons from 2013, and once again, we are just weeks away from an artificial crisis that could hurt our economy. We have come here week after week, month after month, calling on Republicans to join us at the table. And week after week, month after month, Republican leaders have refused. It does not make any sense. They knew this was coming. They look at the same calendars that we do. 
What possible reason could they have for pushing the country to the brink of another Republican-driven crisis? And now, Senator Cruz and the Tea Party are once again pushing their leadership to cause another crisis. This time, they're focusing on women's health care and trying to take care away for millions of women and men in our country. We've seen this before, and it is really deeply disappointing to see Republicans once again listening to the Tea Party and putting politics ahead of women's health. Democrats are not going to let that happen on our watch. And just like two years ago, people across the country are going to be very angry if Republicans allow the Tea Party to win the day and cause another unnecessary crisis. So once again, for the umpteenth time, we're here to ask Republican leaders to do the right thing, join us at the table, put politics and partisanship aside, and build on the bipartisanship deal that we did in 2013. We know it can be done. We have done it before. It shouldn't take another crisis for us to be able to do it again. And the architect of that was Senator Murray, the agreement we reached two years ago. Questions? Senator? Yes. Uh, over the recess, Leader McConnell mentioned that he does not have the votes on Planned Parenthood, that he would work in September to reach out with the White House uh, to find an agreement moving forward on government funding. Has he reached out to you guys? Have those talks started? What needs to be there for you? We've heard nothing. Zero. We have 42 senators that are in favor of the deal, and they will continue voting that way. Senator, where is the sequestration we most need? Defense. Where is sequestration needed? Oh, relief. Well, um, the, re the House Republicans are talking about us continuing resolution. We're demanding a some things. We want equal spending between defense and non-defense. We want to make sure that there are no riders in the legislation of any kind. And, of course, sequestration is something that we need to deal with. Senator Reed, yes. What about uh, the possibility, it may appear to be moving towards a continuing resolution if everything works out, uh, the possibility that this is going to get more, can, this could end up being conjoined with something like the debt ceiling or the transportation bill or tax extenders or whatever it may be, uh, is that something that you guys would like to avoid, or are you okay with that? So here's how I feel about this. <clears throat> a perfect storm is out there brewing. We have, and I've talked to Jack Lew a week ago, he doesn't know how long the government has money left to continue paying its bills. It's not a real long time. He said after the receipts come in for September, he'll have a better idea. But that's a ways from now. Uh, we have all these tax extenders that are just causing us all kinds of problems, both for businesses and individuals. That's going to be at the forefront of what we're doing here. So on any CR, we have to make sure it's at the right length. We, we know we're going to have to have a short CR, but it should be short enough that we don't have to keep coming back for debt ceiling, tax extenders. We should do it all at once. And that's what all three of my colleagues have talked about here today. We need to make sure that there is something in the way of a negotiation. It's not going to happen just because they want it to happen. I do not, I cannot for the life of me understand what the Republicans expect. The, the, the House is again in disarray over there. They can't decide what they're going to do on the bill before us. They were afraid they couldn't pass a rule. That's why they came. They're trying to come up with those three things that they're going to consider at their caucus at 4 o'clock. They better start considering how they're going to fund the government. They can't just jam us with something because it just won't work. Senator Reid, to clarify on your mind, if the resolution of disapproval comes up for a cloture vote here, Democrats will block it. Is that what you're saying? Well, we're not going to have a cloture vote. Yeah, we could, if, he wants, if he wants to waste the time and have a cloture vote, that's fine. But let's not play games here. A vote on cloture is a vote for, for the Iran deal or not the Iran deal. Yes. Everybody agrees 
we need to replace Pardon me? Everybody agrees we need to replace sequestration. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think the, I, John McCain, I got all, Lindsey Graham, they're all talking about sequestration. It's not just us. It's Republicans know that we have to sit down and start talking. Everybody knows except the Republican leadership in the Congress. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.